Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at steel dynamics in the metals and mining industry, 23 billion market cap and, enter and enterprise value. Growth has actually doubled since 2014, but it looks like something happened in 2021 where demand jumped like crazy. I wonder if that was an acquisition. I actually don't see that. So interesting enough, um, as a steel producer and metal recycler, okay. For as big of a company as they are, I'm, I'm intrigued by this 100% growth or 91% growth. That's pretty interesting. But we are seeing gross margins almost double what they were 10 years ago. Operating margins over double. So they've been looking very hot the last couple, the last couple years for sure. Um, Return on invested capital in the 20% range, very, very good, very good return on the money invested back into the business. Let's look at that balance sheet. So we're seeing 1.4, a 2.1 billion in cash-like investment, cash-like in investment uh, assets, and then 2.6, 3 billion total in short-term and long-term debt. That's not a concern given that their free cash flow is well over a billion and is about two billion most recently. So no concern from the balance sheet perspective. Use of cash. They haven't made any they've made one acquisition in 2022, 220 or could have been multiple, but 222 million in aggregate in 2022 for acquisitions. That's pretty low. So we're looking at heavy use of cash for share repurchases. Their dividend is actually uh, 1.25 percent yield, and is only paying out 271 million in aggregate, which to their rolling 12 is maybe 15 percent of their free cash flow going towards a dividend, which is like nothing. Uh, it's very low. They're probably they're probably spending 80 percent, uh, 75 percent share purchases, 15 percent dividend, and then. Um, a little bit of re the rest for reinvestment acquisition and uh, debt pay down. So let's start making some assumptions here. On the revenue side, I'm just huh, there's just this jump, and I wonder it wasn't from an acquisition, so it's just very intriguing to me. I could see this company grow pretty close to inflation. They do have a good return on vested capital, but they're not reinvesting a lot. So you're not getting that excess 20% plus return. Uh, they're really just buying back a lot of shares. At 23 billion, um, a billion in share repurchases seems pretty reasonable and that'd be about 4%. So let's say they buy back 4% of shares margins let's go pretty close to the average here let's go 12 and 10 maybe and then on the dividend side hmm, their free cash flow is a little bit lower maybe i'll do 11 and 9 percent there the dividend they can definitely afford that let's keep it small though let's increase it with their revenue growth i think that seems reasonable to me so they're spending through cash flow quite a bit on share repurchases, about a billion in aggregate. And then just under, th you know, them buying back shares is going to help their uh, dividend per share to increase. So maybe let's actually grow this at 5% because they're buying back shares at 4% a year, I'm presuming. And then so they'll be able to definitely increase that dividend through both the less shares outstanding as well as their revenue growth. So with that, we're saying that the companies fall 23% to get a 15% return. But I do think that this is a very solid company and I would just have to do, I would just want to do more research uh, when it gets closer on whether I think that this revenue is able to sustain and go up from here or whether it's going to dampen down to the pre COVID levels. But that's that's the analysis for Steel Dynamics. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.